This audio fiction is recorded for an adult audience. It may contain scenes of explicit sex, violence and disturbing supernatural entities. Listener discretion is recommended. Come, lend me your ear, as I speak to you of the macabre, the cursed, the maligned, the malignant, the possessed, and the downright demonic. (coughs) Bolt all doors, lock all windows. Are you alone? Are you sure? I suggest you check under the bed, carefully, twice. Baratanak, a new darkness at the world's edge. The water screamed with fury. The sand ran through his fingers, no purchase to be found. He braced his body. The seconds froze, the waves slamming like a freight train. His face was forced into the sand, grinding his cheeks raw against the grains. He was churned powerless as a thick plateau of water returned to the ocean. Oh no, he thought, his pulse pounding at the realisation he was to be swept away. He was carried relentlessly across the flat reef's kaleidoscope corals, the usual knee-deep water now chest-high and unstoppable. Dark tracts appeared between the white towers, deep water. Flailing in the foam, Declan grasped frantically at the line of small brain corals perched at the sharp lip of the reef. Yes, got it, he thought, relieved. Blood threaded from the grip of his white fingertips as water surged past him. He prayed the blood was a sufficient offering to the deciding fates that surged around him. In a horrifying moment, with his lungs close to bursting, all the foam cleared. An undersea slope plunged away from the reef's vertical edge. A more fearful submarine reflection of Bathsheba's deadly ravine with immeasurably greater gravity. Beyond was the abyss. Declan stared, hypnotised, filled with a dread of the same ocean songs he had heard in the rock pools. He gasped for air in the wake of a wave, then again in the trough between two unstoppable white walls of seawater. He held strong but struggled against the insatiable pull of dark, crushing spaces. Soon they will have you, laughed a voice in his head. Faces formed in the deep as his lungs threatened to burst. Blurred dark shapes moved closer, then darted back to the gloom. Sharks, he thought, his biggest fear. Every local said that the tiger shark stayed far from shore, but he'd seen YouTube videos that said the opposite, as did common sense. In the waters he now gawped into, in dread, he sensed entire drowned mountain ranges littered with the rotting hulks of entire ships. If I don't fight, my bones and ambitions will soon join those of far greater men than I below, he thought. Declan could no longer hold on. He rose to the surface, choking. He remembered tales of drowning and hoped that if it was his time, then the tales would prove true and that the final intake of water into the lungs was a sweet release. It was far preferable to staring into the cold, black eyes of a tiger shark. He was still haunted by visions of 15-foot monsters he had seen off Maui. The current tugged at him. 
He drifted over the reef's cliff edge, the rocks far below making him dizzy with vertigo. Now or never, he thought. His arms swung at the water. Swim, he ordered his body. Swim. My disappearance will not become dinner party conjecture for false friends. Declan's heart was on the cusp of collapse from his exertions when one of the white walls lifted him back over the reef and pushed him towards the beach. No, blind worms will not fight over my organs on the ocean floor, he thought as he swam. His arms almost failed him. As he tumbled for what seemed an eternity, his lungs sucked in more at water than air. Deposited high on the sand, coughing racked his body as his saviour wave dissolved around him. He slapped at the last of its foam, desperate to touch it in gratitude. At that moment he felt fragile, breakable, reborn and alive. Every goosebump and prickle on his body reaffirmed his shaken belief that precious chances of reinvention and rebirth, gifted by life's unpredictable events, must be seized before they vanish. Frigate Bird studied his gasping body from on high, invisible in the blinding disk of the sun. They watched him lift his face to the sky and mouth. Thank you. Declan staggered up the beach towards his belongings. Palm trees lined the foot of the tangled hillside ahead. Leaning on the rock, he drank an entire litre of water without pause for breath. Gasping, he saw a small female figure emerge from the palm trees further down the beach before melting back. Mama Myrtle, he thought. She did not reappear. He scanned the far edge of the reef. Several sharp splashes erupted nearer to shore, where sapphire needlefish leapt at the sun to evade the jaws of giant tarpon. The scaled backs of the pursuing predators were as long as a man as they sliced through the shallow water. There but for the grace of God, he thought, squinting at dark shadows that patrolled beyond the reef. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe. I must leave you now, but do not despair. If you listen to the next instalment, the curse cannot harm you. But you must believe. Now pull the blanket over your head and be quiet. You are not alone. Shh.